Hey friends. So today I'm kind of riffing on something that that it, it came to me last night in the shower. That's how you know it's a great idea. Um, I was thinking about something that Sadhguru said. Um, and I forget if this is in his book. I'm clearly on a Sadhguru kick right now. Either in his book or in one of his videos recently, he was talking about how uh, the work that he does, he doesn't take it too seriously. Now, this is a guy who, like, looks at... He's, he's doing some of the most profound work ar around the environment. Obviously, there's a whole kind of... Um, meditation center that he's set up so he's doing de he's doing work that by all accounts that by all sort of like impressions we would think was very serious and that he was very serious about it but he continues to emphasize look i'm just i'm making i'm i'm, I'm just playing i'm just enjoying myself and you know and he's generally quick to clarify that that doesn't mean that he doesn't take the work seriously in, in the sense of really giving himself to it fully, but that it just means that he tries to remember that it's not ultimately, that ultimately this whole, this whole game of reality is a projection. It's a projection. It's not real. And so we should remember that in how we go about engaging with it. And it reminded me of some other contexts I've been in with other, you know, sometimes with other teachers and sometimes just with, just with, um, in, in like conversations or <clears throat> in read other environments where inner work, spiritual work is sort of the, the um, the thing we're talking about. It's the thing that's on the table. And the question is, well, how, how do we, not just what are we doing or what's our outlook or what's our philosophy or, you know, what's our, what, what, what kinds of ideas are we kicking around? That's all, you know, interesting and kind of sets the context. But the, but the question of like, actually, what are we, how, how do we go about doing work in the world the question of how do we go about doing work in the world and there's it's really easy it's really easy to feel like that work is important it's my purpose after all and to inflate the i don't know if the significance is the right word but to inflate the magnitude of it And it's almost like in the energetic constitution of our intention, something shifts. And it's subtle, and it's, it may very often feel appropriate, but it takes us out of the place of play, you know? What all the great teachers say is life should is an expression. Life should be an expression of our joy. It should be an expression of our underlying bliss of existence, not a pursuit of joy. The pursuit of happiness has it exactly backwards. If if we're pursuing happiness in the world, we are expecting the projection of reality to give us the thing that we are already have natural and infinite access to, and that forms the substrate of our very existence. But by, per, by even just, this is why, you know, language frames our frames our reality. Language doesn't just describe what we how we, what we perceive. 
Language creates what we perceive as far as we're concerned. So when we say the pursuit of happiness, I have the right to the pursuit of happiness. What I'm saying is I am not already inherently infused with happiness. So now I can insist on my right to pursue happiness and 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 it, but 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 there's there's literally no such thing as acquiring happiness. There there is no such thing. We can't acquire. Not I mean I'm not saying we can't temporarily get something that makes us happy. I'm saying there's no final destination on that journey. There's no way to arrive at the place where the bliss of our beingness has been attained. We don't attain it. We don't pursue it. We don't attain it. We recognize it. We surrender to it. And then what we do in the world and even what we see in the world is a reflection of that interior, that internal um, experience of bliss. And this is, again, this was just kind of kicking around my head yesterday. And I was sort of, I think I was just kind of, uh, because I've had, um, I've heard various teachers over the years say, say different things on this subject. And some of them really emphasize work in the world. You know, and I think there are different, there are differing leanings bet between, uh, do you know, do we do we believe that the spiritual experience is is an entirely internal one, or is or does all of it really own? Does the rubber really meet the road out in the world, where we receive a kind of objective reflection? of ourselves you know is it is it entirely is it is it solipsistic to say well the, the the spiritual experience consciousness can only ever be perceived from the interior so therefore the exterior doesn't matter it doesn't it doesn't mean it, you know, it, reality isn't really real it's, it's all it's all an illusion it's all a projection and this is a, it's just a dicey one. It's it's one of these questions that I feel like uh it's a paradox essentially. It's one of these one of these questions that we don't really resolve but that we increasingly for for me what's happening is that the question unravels when I simply surrender to to the to to the moment to what is actually here in this moment because what's here in this moment is not just an interior it's also an exterior there's there's, there's a, there is a world in this moment um one of the beautiful things Sadhguru says this is in his book is in every, every moment if you really could see every if you, if you could really see all the way to the root of uh, your of our own karma, we would see that every single moment, the now moment, is inevitable. This moment now is inevitable. And then he says, but is the next moment inevitable? And he says, no. The next moment is infinite possibilities. So in other words, the fact that this moment is inevitable doesn't make it doesn't mean that it's fatalistic. Well, this it's all inevitable. That's all inevitable. There, it just doesn't even matter about the the free choice is an illusion. It doesn't really matter what I do. No, this moment is inevitable because we can actually witness the. The, we, we have a chain of cause and effect that got us to this moment. But the next moment, the more, that's the whole thing of, you know, that's why, you know, freeing ourselves from the wheel of samsara, the wheel of um, 
the ever turning, you know, what I call the merry-go-round. That's the that is a chain of cause and effect. That's cyclical movement. Cyclical movement is is movement that goes in a circle. You we and we go around and around and around and around and again, and that's the whole thing we're trying to free ourselves from. If we can get free from that, then the next moment contains infinite possibilities. It will not be determined by cause and effect. We can respond completely autonomously in every moment. And 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 I think the thing that was really that was really showing up around this idea of well what do we do in the world then? You know, what is our what what should what do we go do? And I again I love to to look at the life of somebody like Sadhguru who's like literally in the middle of a of a motorcycle ride across Europe and Asia to uh, bo boost awareness around his soil initiative, basically like talking about desertification in India and but soil all over the world, farming practices that destroy the soil. Um, it's a big thing, and it's it's a it's a big you know climate issue, and it's one of the lesser talked about climate issues, I would say. And you know talk about action in the world, talk about doing something, but to still acknowledge that that action springs from play. It's not to fix the world. If we think we're going to fix the world, then we're going to be looking for the, for the, for feedback from the world, from the exterior world that tells us everything is okay. And everything is never okay. We're all going to die. The planet is going to get subsumed in a fiery ball of flame when the sun explodes. It's Nothing's going to be okay from the point of view of a human life. But that's not a problem <laughs> if we're not looking, you know, if, 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 if us being okay doesn't require the world to tell us we're okay now we're in a different place. Now we can can be okay. Now we can project onto the world our inherent okayness, the 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 infinite bliss of existence that never goes anywhere that cannot be destroyed, that cannot begin or end, that just simply is. Now we're not. Now, now we haven't outsourced it. We haven't. We haven't. At, we have, we're not. We're not in the pursuit of happiness anymore. We are in the. It's like we're uh, radiating happiness, or we're we're creating happiness. Just a, it's just a really interesting thing. I, I reflect on this sometimes, and I know that this post kind of sounds maybe a bit philosophical or kind of esoteric, but but I think it really matters how we construct our own internal understanding of where, of what happiness is, what joy is, and how we go about getting it, you know, because getting happiness, pursuing happiness, if, if just the language we use to frame it, we could, we can spend a long time going in a direction that Ultimately, it's is just a series of cycles. It's just round and round and round and round and round, and we're we don't understand why we never seem to get to happiness. We've been we're we're so diligent about pursuing happiness. Why don't we ever get there? Well, it's because it's not how it works. Um, you know, and then of course culturally, if you if you um, if there is. If we have to make if, if if we have to make the world okay, if it's our job to make the world okay, and to and to finally get the world to a place where it tells us everything's okay, well then now we have a good reason for you know telling other people that their methods are flawed. We have a good reason for going into battle against other people with other methods who don't agree that the world needs to be, would be made okay in the same way you know we have the basis for conflict whereas 
the world is okay. I am okay. I literally am the bliss of existence. Creates a different... <laughs> Where's the basis for conflict in that? Right? It's so intricate. It's so, it's so kind of, it's, it, it's so paradoxical, this type of thinking, because I actually think there are things we need to defend. You know, a human being needs boundaries. There, there, the, the, this is the thing about, this is the thing about life. We always need, there's no, there's no part of life that's not part of life. There's no part of life that we, sh that we need to banish and be like, that's not part of life. But ideally, we could take every aspect of life and understand that it's part of a game, that it's, it's, it's part of a projection. It's part of something we are willingly, we have chosen to willingly participate in and, and, jo and ultimately we are joyful participants. Our soul is a joyful participant in this game, whether we consciously know it or not. Our bodies and our minds can be miserable, even as our soul is bathed in a literal kind of aura of, of bliss. And so, but if we can, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice to connect with that? Wouldn't it be nice to actually feel that as opposed to have to believe philosophically that like, okay, I know my soul is made of bliss. I'm going to meditate home. Let me meditate until I feel my bliss. You know, it, it, we we go we put ourselves in contortions trying to trying to discover that. Um, but it's there. It is actually there. There is that dimension of existence, and if we can just locate it, if we can just find a way to. I mean, again, this is I, I'm articulating my own struggle here because it's like I sense my own psyche and my own. Um, the, the locus of my awareness being pulled in various directions. I sense myself being drawn into perspectives and then I'll congeal in a perspective and then I'll let it go and then I'll congeal into another perspective and then I get some information I'm like, wait, and I'm back and I congeal. And it's it that, that seems to be a process that the mind can't help but, perf but but perform. I can't stop that from happening. What I can do is know that it's a game. I can know that none of these perspectives are ultimately finally valid or finally sort of the truth. And I can hold them all within that spirit of play. So I think that's where I'm encouraging myself to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. This is a big one. This is a long one. If you made it to the end, I love you. Appreciate you. Have a great day. See you soon.